He said that Jesus Christ has risen And He is the open door Well, how you doing everyone? Welcome to another episode of The Cajun Conservative Where I talk about life, I talk about liberty And I will talk about this pursuit of happiness And showing the world that Cajuns do have intelligence I hope if you're watching on Rumble and on YouTube If you excuse the way I look I'm going to give some in-depth stu- in details to the audience I am in, I just got off of work busy busy day i am in my work uniform from hazard's dump truck service who is by the way um a sponsor of this podcast should go check them out um but yeah so i have my work hat on i have my work uniform on i'm pressed for time but guess what i'm here that's that's all that matters so all the listening audience will not see this beautiful handsome good looking fella behind the microphone but my friends on youtube and rumble yeah, you might be able to, you might look at me and go, he's uglier than ever. But that's because, hey, at least I'm showing I'm part of the working class. Let's just say it like that, because there's a lot of people that think, hey, you know, you're a podcaster. You're heard all over the world. Uh, you must have, you, you know, you must do this for a living. And I'm like, no, no, I do this for pure entertainment. And f- just to get some thoughts out there, ladies and gentlemen, to be honest with you. And um, yeah, so, you know. Anyway, but I'm in my work uniform. I just got off of work and a lot of breaking news is going on in the last couple of days since we've been together. So I'm ready to dive in. But before that, I want to go ahead and remind everyone, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button on your preferred platform. That's Apple, Google or Spotify or Amazon Music, the new Amazon Music, by the way, because we are on Amazon now. Um, if you are watching on Rumble or on YouTube, please consider hitting the subscribe button. Please hit, uh, hit the bell or hit the Rumble button. It helps out more than you know. Let's start spreading the good news of conservatism throughout the entirety of the land. Um, if you like social media, go ahead and um, hit the social media accounts. As I'm on Facebook, I'm on True Social. And I am on Twitter. So just go ahead and check us out. Um, I've been tweeting. I've been truthing. I've been Facebooking. Um, I'm not on Instagram or anything like that. I I got a personal Instagram account. But uh, as for making like a Snapchat, I did consider that. Snapchat is very, very large right now. I mean, big. But anyway, let me go ahead and wet, wet my whistle with some coffee uh again you can't a lot of you might ask why are you drinking coffee if you're listening to this in the morning you're probably oh he's just woken up look at him he's drinking his coffee no like i said i just got off of work late in the afternoon just good to go ahead and drink some coffee so anyway so let's dive into this week's uh news articles that i have saved and i i felt that we needed to talk about so the last uh time i was with you i titled the episode the democrats do not like the second amendment and i broke down how the second amendment is being attacked by the democratic party the democrat party right now is fighting still but i'm just not going to call the 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 democrat party because the democrat party is a small scheme in the communistic socialistic idea of thinking and ladies and gentlemen, to be honest with you, this was the, 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 the thought of gun control is the first of any dictator. It's just being blunt. Look, Fidel Castro took away the arms of the people. So, so it's just not the Democrats that are pushing this idea of gun control are taking guns away. And listen, ladies and gentlemen, you give the left a uh, um, an inch they're gonna want to take a mile i used the analogy of the last set on the last show go check it out where the um the democrats back in the 90s or the left back in the 90s uh, in america were saying huh you know we got this assault ban so now we want to uh, take away handguns 
Now, ladies and gentlemen, you might be saying, well, Isaac, why are you bringing that back up? Well, because this week, two of the the um, the P, the two of the most famous people on the left are attacking gun rights and wanting to ban handguns. I'm going to start off with our friends of the north. If you are from Canada, God help you. Um, but you have uh, Trudeau as your prime minister. Like I said, please, Lord, help them individuals in Canada. And I know the Canadians have a reputation for saying, well, we don't get angry. Well, y'all need to start getting angry. Y'all need, need to get out, Trudeau. I don't know how the Canada system of voting is. I know one person. Well, I know a few people that originated from Canada. Uh, one person that does still live in Canada. But Canadian Prime Minister Trudeau announces legislation to freeze handgun ownership and buy back assault weapons style uh, assault style weapons now this is what gets me ladies and gentlemen about this when i first saw this justin trudeau the prime minister of canada is putting this into place because of the recent events in texas um to my knowledge i don't remember the last mass shooting in canada Canada, by the way, is this, this the same guy, Trudeau, is the same one that went ahead and tried to stop the trucker caravan. Remember the ones that, that parked in front of his prime minister's house and he took their trucks away and he said, I'm going to sell them and we're going to keep the money. Yeah, that's the same Justin Trudeau, but Canadian prime minister Justin Trudeau announced Monday that he is, his government is introducing legislation to in, imply, imply, implement, emplacement no a national freeze of handgun ownership throughout the country what does this mean it is that it would no longer be possible to buy sell or transfer or import handguns anywhere in canada his quote we recognize that the vast majority of gun owners use them safely and accordingly within the law but others using firearms for sport shooting and hunting there is no reason in canada should need uh, no reason anyone in Canada should need guns in their everyday life. Uh, Canadian Minister of Public Service, Macro Mac, uh, Mandesian Neckel, whatever that name is, also said that a mandatory buy uh, buyback program for assault style weapons will go into effect later this year if the bill passes, calling it Canadians' most significant action on gun violence. In, in a generation ladies and gentlemen listen to this you have an administrator this, this canada now justin trudeau this is out of the blue ladies and gentlemen i i know why this is going that's why i didn't say the uh, democrats i said this is a leftist agenda the left wants to take away the guns because they're they're hungry for power Justin Trudeau doing this, and now we know why he's doing this, is because he feels that the shooting in Uval, 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 Uval Texas, or the mass shooting in Texas, he's obligated to do something in his country to stop the combat combat of gun uh, gun rights. But ladies and gentlemen, I don't know why he's doing this. Like I said, I don't can anybody tell me when the last time we had a gun mass shooting in Canada? Um, I, I don't remember. But the left is trying to take away your guns. This is proven. Oh, Isaac, that is one incident. You made a whole podcast episode about that. Why are you bringing this up again? Hold on. So with Biden's call to ban assault weapons and his false claim that when he banned assault weapons back in the 90s, that mass shootings went down. He came back from Texas from Road uh, Rob's Elementary, and Biden, coming off of Air Force One, took attack nine millimeter handguns. Pre this is uh, the, the article reads. This is from Fox News. Biden calls nine millimeter high caliber weapons suggests banning them. The president Biden on Monday took aim at nine millimeter handguns, appearing to suggest that the high caliber weapons ought to be banned. The president made the remarks outside the White House after returning from the visit of the state, uh, the site of the mass shooting in Texas, where 21 people, including 19 elementary school students, were killed. Biden said, um, Biden said they, 
they said a 22 caliber bullet will lodge in the lung and we could possibly get it out may be able to get it and save a life a nine millimeter bullet blows the lung out of the body biden said so the idea of these high caliber weapons is um there's something not rational basic for in the uh, for in the terms of self-protection hunting Biden added, remember, the Constitution was never absolute. Ladies and gentlemen, if you remember a few months ago, I made an episode when Biden quoted this, that the Constitution is not absolute and the Second Amendment is not absolute. But in reality, it is. See, ladies and gentlemen, Biden is bringing out these false claims. I have the article here where Biden makes the claim. And he says that you couldn't buy a cannon when the second amendment was written and that in the second amendment you could never you, you could never you could it was limited on what guns the citizens have that's not true ladies and gentlemen gun legislation didn't come out until the 1930s if I'm, I'm if my history serves me right ladies and gentlemen this is the issue what's going on wait they, they, they just don't want you to have handguns they don't want you to have handguns. That's the thing. But if you read the Constitution, the Constitution says that you have the right to bear arms. They never said what what type of weapons. Like I said, gun legislation didn't come out in the 1920s, 1930s. But Biden bringing out this claim that this the, 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 the Second Amendment is not absolute. Ladies and gentlemen, yes, it is. The Founding Fathers put it in there for a reason but biden suggesting now that we need to ban handguns remember i told you i told you last week it's going to start with assault weapons well last last time we were together it's going to start with assault weapons then it's going to go to something else then it's going to go to something else and, and, and all the same while they're going to say well we're not against hunting we're not against uh defending yourself but we don't think people should have these guns like I said, I don't know where Biden got this notion that a nine millimeter can blow out a lung. I guess if you're, I guess if you're, you're, you're good enough, you can blow out a lung. I, I don't know. I'm, let's say like this. I, I don't have a nine millimeter. I know a lot of people that do though. Nine millimeter is mostly a, nine, uh, a self-defense round. So ladies and gentlemen, the president of the United States and Justin Trudeau, that's on the left. Don't want people to protect themselves. Given their God-given right under the Constitution. Now, Justin Trudeau, I don't care about Justin Trudeau. He's not the president of the United States. I do care about what Biden thinks, though. Biden, the president of the United States, are telling people, hey, we're gonna we we should ban this. Now, Biden did come out and say because people were asking him, hey, can you sign executive orders? He said, everything I've done so far is as far as what I could do. I can't do nothing else. Now, Justin Trudeau, he's part of parliament. If, 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 I rem if I'm understanding Canadian politics correct, he's part of parliament. He's the prime minister. So he has a vote on this as well. But ladies and gentlemen, politicians advocating for people not to defend themselves. Let's just think about that. Now, of course, here in America, we have the Republican Party that's going to protect us, right? Not necessarily town hall media republicans once again risk blowing the midterms with new talks with democrats what is this about this comes from townhall.com from an article um let's see who this is from from matt vispa i hope i said your name matt uh, matt right anyway um in the 2022 midterms uh, the 2022 midterms are here the winds are in favor of the gop to retake retake the at least the house but some republicans want to make deals with people who we all know cannot be trusted with deals first there will there was rumblings of a bipartisan talk on immigration reform after the april break i thought that was the worst of it no there's new bipartisan chatter about new anti-gun packages i'm not kidding republicans you're you're doing you're doing this right now you shouldn't be doing it at all but come on guys it's like you want to find a new way to lose this is coming from the from matt vespa paul from town hall he's right now i think this was a, 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 a an opinion piece but i agree with this opinion piece 
ladies and gentlemen, the, the Democrat Party and the left wants to take your guns away. They're advocating for, and, and this is on a whole different note, they're advocating for, <laughs> they're advocating to kill babies outside the womb or until, until they're born. All the Republicans have to do is sit back. Ladies and gentlemen, majority of Americans want to keep their guns. I'm hoping most of Americans know why they're keeping their guns. But the Republican Party is failing at this. Um, top re this is coming from CNN politics. Top Senate Republicans say bipartisan gun reform negotiations will meet remotely on Tuesday, last Tuesday. Ladies and gentlemen, look, this is all run by emotions, ladies and gentlemen. This is all run by, look, I, I knew we had, and look, at the time of this recording is a week and two days since the shooting in Texas. And it was, I was even emotional. But making law based on emotion does not, that's not right. Ladies and gentlemen, there was a person that shot somebody with a gun. And it was an evil person. But Republicans are now caving in. And because they're going to cave in, guess what's going to happen? This is this, I, I believe. Voters like me are going to be like, well, why are we putting them in there? They're going to cave. Instead of Republicans fighting for us, they're going to cave to the Democrat Party. And it's hurting us, ladies and gentlemen. This is hurting us. The, the Republican Party don't realize what they're doing. And Biden going ahead and saying, hey, I, look, look, the law ain't even passed yet. They don't even have a bipartisan law. No, there's no law, gun, new gun control measures out there yet. And the Republicans are already uh, caving. And Biden and the left are already saying, oh, since you're caving to that, we're gonna, we want handguns now. Think about this, ladies and gentlemen. Think about it. Now, you won't see this. You know what? I'm going to save that for the next segment, ladies and gentlemen, because we're going to, it's going to tie into that story after that. Then we're going to get into Michael Sussman's trial and verdict. But we're going to be, uh, I'm going to hold that thought on what stops, what was the media not showing you this week? Because the media is showing you, oh, this is bad, and Biden wants to ban handguns, and they're, they're trying to get into the minds of people, but they're not showing you Another story that made it big, somewhat. I'm going to tell you that after the break. I'll be right back after this short, short break from our sponsors. How you doing, everyone? Isaac here. I'm the Cajun Conservative. And I want to thank Brother Lanny Hayes from Hayes' Dump Truck Service for their generous support of the Cajun Conservative and Brothers Just Searching. Hayes' Dump Truck Service serves the Lafayette and surrounding areas. If you have any job that you need done, like cleanup or hauling material to your job site or your home, we haul limestone, we haul sand, we haul topsoil, any type of material you need. If you're in the Lafayette and surrounding areas, please call Brother Lanny Hayes at 337-852-8043. Remember, Hayes' Dump Truck Service, where Jesus is Lord of the company. All right, everybody, welcome back to the second segment of the Cajun Conservatives Show. I'm going to go jump right back into what we were talking about. So I, I was talking about Justin Trudeau in the left and, and Biden that wants backwards Biden that wants to take away guns. And then then we talk about how Republicans are saying, oh, my goodness, yes, we have to change gun laws. This should not happen again. Oh, we should stop people from getting guns at 18 years old. We need to. Put more background checks. We need, and they're saying all this, ladies and gentlemen. And 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 what they're what they're doing is they're bending over to the Democrat Party and the leftist agenda. They're falling into their hands. See, the, the the left is dealing with emotions here, ladies and gentlemen. They're 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 making people. Oh, if this boy wouldn't have had a gun, and they're correct on that. If this boy wouldn't have had a gun, he wouldn't have shot up all them kids. Oh, that means we need to stop him from having guns. Hold on. 
Listen, look, background checks. Oh, we need to expand background checks. Ladies and gentlemen, this boy was 18 years old. There's no, I don't think there's no proof of him, unless, but only his family, his dad, that I heard this week from Culper's Canteen Cup. Shout out to my boys over there that, that they studied this and they said that his dad was a felon and his mom was a, uh, was, I don't, wasn't in his life. And I, so, so they, but you, this, the, to my knowledge, this boy did not have a record. So it, he could have passed 20 background checks. He probably still would have got a gun. There was no record of him having a, a criminal record. Mental illness, that's something that can be bypassed on a background check. But the Republicans are doing, oh, we don't want people to think we, we're for mass murderers or the NRA. Oh, my God, we got to do something. Ladies and gentlemen, what they're doing is, and this is the Republican Party is falling into this. They're falling on emotions. And they're afraid that all of a sudden this, this topic. And look, this is what the Democrats are doing too, ladies and gentlemen, the left and the Democrats. This is what they're doing. They're harping on this stuff. They're harping, <clears throat> excuse me. They're harping on the Supreme Court leak. Oh, you know, oh, the, the Supreme Court's going to stop it. So vote for us and put us in the power and we're going to keep abortion. They're doing the same thing. Hey, vote for us and we're going to pass gun laws. So the Republicans are running scared with the, the, the tail between their legs. Oh my goodness, no, 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 we can't do that. We got to do something to please the, the Democrat base. But what about the Second Amendment base? That's what the Republicans are doing. But ladies and gentlemen, like I said... The, and the media is doing a good job. They're hiding a lot of good stuff. Like this article. And this is from Fox News. And look, I, I found this from Colin Noor from, in, on Facebook. The guy that's for the Second Amendment and he quotes the Constitution and all. I didn't hear about this. Even on Fox News. Fox News had an article. I didn't even see it. I'm surprised. But listen to this article from Fox News. West Virginia woman with a pistol kills man firing at a graduation party saves several lives. A woman in West Virginia fatally shot a man Wednesday night who had begun firing an AR-15 style rifle into a crowd of dozens. Charleston police identified the man as 37 year old Dennis Butler. The people were attending a birthday party and graduation party outside a Renaissance Circles apartment complex. <clears throat> Butler had been at the apartment complex early in the evening in a vehicle and was warned to slow down because the kids, because children were playing, according to the authorities. He left but later returned and parked in front of the complex before shooting. The woman who was attending the West Virginia party, she drew a pistol and fired on Butler. No one attending the party was injured. The woman didn't wait for the police to arrive and she and several witnesses had uh, cooperated with the investigation. You, did you just listen to this, ladies and gentlemen? Let me go ahead and read this too. Instead of running from the threat, she engaged with the threat and saved several lives last night. Chief of Detective Tony Hoslett told news outlets Thursday. Ladies and gentlemen, the media don't want you to see this. The media does not want you to see this. Look, a good lady, a good woman with a gun stopped a bad man with a gun. Ladies and gentlemen, this, is, this sums up the whole Second Amendment right here. See, the Democrats and the Republicans, or some Republicans, all of a sudden want to change gun laws and want to stop people from having handguns. Ladies and gentlemen, this was a handgun that stopped an AR-15 shooter. Now, oh, we got to stop. We got to stop handguns. There's no use for a handgun. This is the Second Amendment right here did this if they had to use an example of the second amendment this is it the second amendment mr biden is not for hunting mr trudeau it's not for hunting it is to protect yourself from evildoers and if had to the government of the united states see biden is bringing that out too by the way 
oh, people are saying that the Second Amendment is to stop the government if they overreach. Oh, you need F-15s and you need this, you need that. Ladies and gentlemen, I, it's kind of funny, okay? The President of the United States telling his people, hey, we're going to ban your guns, but hey, let's go ahead and encourage the Ukrainians to get guns to stop Russia. Do you know why Russia is not fully in control of Ukraine? It's not because of Zelensky. Zelensky's the leader and he's doing his job. You know why Russia is hesitating now? Because Zelensky was smart and he gave his citizens guns and those Russian, them Russian idiots, them, them, them Russians that, 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 that are led by Vladimir Putin. No, they can't go kick down a door and just take over the family because they might get shot. This is an example of the Second Amendment. I'm also going to quote this from the media. Well, the media has not brought this out. The Daily Call, a weekend of carnage. Liberal cities see massive spike in violence, murder, violence, crime over the weekend. This was last weekend, ladies and gentlemen. You know what cities these were? Philadelphia, Chicago, New York. Saw dozens of fatal shootings over the holiday weekend. Multiple police departments told the Daily Caller News Foundation that victims included women and children. Ladies and gentlemen, we had a woman from West Virginia that was allowed to carry a gun and she stopped violence. Philadelphia, Chicago, New York have some of the toughest stricter gun laws in the nation. Do you know what happened? Bad guys with guns knew they could get away with crime. So they went ahead and pursued the crime because they knew somebody was not protecting. Or so in New York, Chicago, and Philadelphia, you can't carry guns. You can't have a carry like this. And look, ladies and gentlemen, my state of Louisiana, we have concealed carry. You have to go take a class. But ladies and gentlemen, this, this is bizarre. This, this is bizarre. The media will not show you what I told you today. This is, might have been the first time some of you might have heard this on this podcast. This, like I said, this article with this woman and the article that shows the violence that happened in Philadelphia, New York, and Chicago shows why the Second Amendment needs to be put in place. And I'm going to be honest with you. Republicans, if they put this up to a vote and Republicans vote for this, I will call them out. I heard this morning, and I'm not happy with my state senator, uh, um, backstabbing Cassidy. Backstabbing Cassidy. It's, it, oh, we, need re, we need gun reform. That idiot thought he had any chance to run for governor in the state of Louisiana just went out the window. I need a taste of coffee. Ah, to calm down my nerves before my next story. I'm going to be honest with you, ladies and gentlemen. I will call out Republicans that do not, I repeat, do not support the Second Amendment. One of them is Mitch McConnell. The other one is the other senator from Texas. Let me see his name. John Cornett. And my own state senator, Bill Cassidy. That's just three of them. Oh, Isaac, why you call out them three? Because they are, they're, they're open to having legislative conversation with the Democrats who want to take away freedom. Makes me sick. All right, guys. So we have another story that popped up this week that, that made me pretty disgusted. Michael Schultzman, the, the lawyer for Hillary Clinton, was found not guilty of charges brought to him by special counsel John Durham. According to Fox News, the jury spent two, they, there is a two weeks trial. The jury came out and said, yep, John, uh, Michael Sussman's lied to the FBI. Yep, it's proven, it's been proven. Ladies and gentlemen, this, this whole case um, where the Trump, uh, not the Trump, the, the Hillary Clinton campaign manager said, um, yeah, he knew about it. We told her not to put it out, but they wanted this for October surprise. Now, um, 
Yeah, the jury found that special counsel John Durham's team had not proven beyond a reasonable doubt that Schultzman's uh, statement was a lie and it was, in fact, working on the behalf of Hillary Clinton. President campaign and technology executive Ryan Giff Griffin, when he bought two thumbs drives to the uh, of white paper alleging a Trump rushing connection. Okay, I must have read that wrong earlier then. Anyway. But they have be, but if you go go according to this, ladies and gentlemen, he got off. But it was where look, I'm gonna be honest with you. Me following this case, it was beyond a shadow of a doubt that Michael Schussman lied. Now you might bring this up because I thought the jury came out and said, Yeah, but this but it wasn't proven. Or he didn't deliberately lie to the FBI. He lied, but he didn't mean to lie. He may, he mis mis he must have misspoke. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you might say, well, Isaac, you can't, why are you griping about this? This was a jury of his peers and they all, without a shadow of a doubt, said John Durham did not bring a good case. But ladies and gentlemen, this is the problem with this. I've come to the knowledge that half of the people, well, first of all, this was done in Washington, D.C. He was in a Washington, D.C. courtroom. And the jury process is supposed to be nonpartisan. A lot of those jurors were donors to Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. <gasps> Wait, what? Hold on, huh? Now, I heard this also from Dan Bongino that this has been proven. That majority of the jurors were Democrat or led more to Democrat than Republican. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm, I'm just going to be honest with you. You might say, well, Isaac, that's starting to sound like a little conspiracy. Are you better? And look, I'm threading the line a little bit. But ladies and gentlemen, it's kind of funny, okay? And I'm going to bring another comparison on here. In 2017, Michael Flynn was charged with lying to the FBI. Michael Flynn, to this day, four years later, four, four and a half years later, is still looked at as a traitor. He still looked at as a liar. Oh, yes, he pleaded guilty. Now, the only reason he pleaded guilty, he didn't have the money like Michael Sussman. They're not, and look, nobody's asking that question. Who paid for Michael Sussman's um, lawyers? He had all the money in the world to fight this case. Hmm? But Michael Flynn didn't. They still defend, they, they still look at Michael Flynn. And if I'm, yeah, I could be wrong, but Michael Flynn didn't even know he was being interviewed by the FBI. They went meet him. He talked and all of a sudden, oh, he lied to the FBI. Michael Schussman, however, gets a, gets a notice. The FBI wants to talk to him. Go meets a lawyer friend of his. And then all of a sudden shows up and still somehow lied to the FBI. But ladies and gentlemen, this is the difference with Michael Flynn and Michael Sussman. General Flynn and Michael Sussman, whatever his last, Sussman. One worked for Hillary Clinton and the other worked for Donald Trump. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. Washington, D.C., 95% of Washington, D.C. voted Democrat. All the people on the jury is Democrat. All the, all the people on the jury, some way, shape, or form, donated to a political campaign, and it wasn't a Republican, it was a Democrat. Ladies and gentlemen, this, look, it's been proven without a shot. This was in court. In court, it was proven that he lied to the FBI. But the jury... And they took a day and a half just to make it not look too bad. Because they would have went in there, said, all right, guys, y'all think he's guilty? No, no, no. Why? Because of political purposes. Donald Trump really did try to try to steal the election, and Russia did try to help him. Mm -hmm. um, 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 but we, we can't vote for that. Nope, nope. Mm -mm. Uh, let's, let's wait a day and a half. Hey, uh, um, bailiff, bring us some nachos and cheese. And they waited a day and a half. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't think they deliberated more than a man in the moon. They may have read a good book. That's maybe all they did. But ladies and gentlemen, this, this, look, beyond a shadow of a doubt, he 
he did this. He lied to the FBI. But he's going to slap on the wrist. Now, I did you hear from Fox News. This is the article. The spies acquittal Durham trial of Sussman added to evidence Clinton campaign plotted to tie Trump to Russia. Maybe that's what John Durham. John Durham maybe thought, well, I don't have the evidence, but now it's on record. That Hillary Clinton knew about this and knew it was a a phony. But to win an election, she went ahead and tried. She tried to, to put this. And she, she, look, she didn't even win the election. And that's when Obama got into play. And Obama said, look, you know what? Let's bring this out to, to make him look like he's an illegitimate president. Ladies and gentlemen, look. And people wonder why Donald Trump called this place a swamp. Washington, D.C. If you work for the right candidate... You get off scot-free. And look, this ain't the first time we've seen this, ladies and gentlemen. This isn't the first time. And it probably won't be the last. That's why the left wants D.C. as a state. When it's clearly stated that the, 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 the nation's capital should be separated. So it can be bipartisan. The, unfortunately, the only Republicans that are in Washington, D.C. are probably the, the, the Republicans on Capitol Hill. But the Democrat, look, and ladies and gentlemen, this is what makes me sick about this. This is what makes a a nation that's supposed to be the land of the free and home of the brave and brave and, and, and justice is blind. It don't matter your political party. It, I don't know, ladies and gentlemen, it, it, it's not, it's not looking too well. We need, we need a wake-up call. And I'm not talking just about a wake-up call with, hey, in the midterms, which is only five months away now, hey, go vote Republican. It's going to change because I, I, I proved that wrong in the first segment. Ladies and gentlemen, we need a wake-up call, and we need it good. We need a spiritual wake-up call because I think this is the only thing that's going to stop this corruption. I'll be right back after this short break. Cheers and good on you, boys and girls. My name is Scott Ford, and I have a show on Rumble. It's the Scott Ford Show, all in one word, the Scott Ford Show, and it's on Rumble. And I also have a motivational success show on YouTube. So go ahead and subscribe and ring that bell. That would mean a lot to me. Enjoy your life. Thank you, Isaac. God bless. All right, everybody, welcome back to the third and final segment of the Cajun Conservative Show. As always, thank you for listening and thank you for being part of this great Cajun Conservative family. It's an honor and a blessing to do this every two, every... Hold on, I'm trying to... Oh, uh, I got it. I got it. Uh, and two two times out of the week to come and give my opinion of stories and give my opinions of things that are going on. We just had some breaking news. By the time you listen to this, it's not going to be breaking no more. But uh, John Johnny Depp, the famous Twenty One Jump Street. See, I, see all y'all, y'all, all y'all older folks are probably like, y'all, y'all, y'all don't remember Johnny Depp. We remember Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp played on 21 Drum Street. Does not the movies. Well, the movie. Um, but the series, uh, which I I was a big fan of 21 Jump Street. I, uh, so a while back, I was looking for something to watch. And I saw 21 Jump Street. I was like, hmm, I, I saw the movie. Uh, I just didn't get the end where the Johnny Depp's character and that other guy was in there. They were like the police department, whatever. Um, but anyway, them guys uh, were in there. I'm like, who's that? So I, I watched the, the series, all of them. Johnny Depp did not play in the last season. Uh, I think he thought it was too violent or something. like. I forgot what it was. Now, Johnny Depp is a leftist, by the way, just giving it order. But Johnny Depp really, um, through this case, and I have not talked about it, ladies and gentlemen. This is, I think this is the first time I've talked about it. The, the, the trial, I, I think I had, I think I heard like seven weeks. Uh, let me go to my let me let me go to my my sources. Uh, but yeah, I don't know why this went to Facebook. Um, no, but anyway, 
the uh, Johnny Depp um, got really hit with the Me Too movement, really. Because the way I heard it, Amber heard his ex-wife, ex-girlfriend, whatever, um, said that she was very abusive. She wrote an op-ed in, I think, the Wall Street Journal or something of that nature and called him out. Well, Johnny Depp, well, she sued Johnny Depp and Johnny Depp, <laughs> Johnny Depp countersued her. Uh, I think Amber Heard is getting $2 million because they said her, uh, the lawyer of Johnny Depp defamed her. And but Johnny Depp is getting awarded 15 million in damages because you got to realize through this case, um, he lost the powers of the Caribbean gig with Jack, uh, Jack Sparrow. I don't think I did that right, but anyway. Um, but the way that it, the way that it's looking, Johnny Depp, it has uh, it was proven that he, he wasn't really the the abuser. It was really her. And um, now, ladies and gentlemen, this really don't this really don't do nothing for the country. I'm just, I'm just bringing this out because people are probably going to ask, well, what'd you think about What you going to think about the Johnny Depp and Amber Heard trial? To be honest with you though, ladies and gentlemen, going back to my last segment, when we were talking about Michael Seuss, uh, Seussman, that trial should have been on TV long, way longer, uh, or should have been the eyes of the Americans than Johnny Depp and Amanda Heard. That this is, this is a show's, the nation, uh, the nation we're living in right now. More people wanted to find out this verdict than people wanted to find out if Michael Schussman lied to the FBI. And, and ladies and gentlemen, a while back, um, look, I'm and look, I'm not against anybody that made a video on that. I'm not against, I'm not against. Uh, you, you have the right, you have a, your First Amendment right to speak the way you want. The Will Smith slap. I hardly brought it up. Because to be honest with you, who cared? I'm being, look, yes, it made news, but it shows people care more about actors than politicians. And that's maybe why politicians get away with, they want to get with, get away with. That's why politicians can say, because I, I, you know, I bet I can go on the local campus here at UL and ask them about this case. And a lot of them young folks would go ahead and give me the to the detail of Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. I mean, to the T, I, I promise you they would go ahead and tell me all the details. But when I would ask them, well, who's your state representative? Nine out of 10, they'd be like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> well, who's your, you know, who's your governor? I bet you a lot of them were like, oh, I don't know. Oh. You get what I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen? That, that just, that's why I didn't stay with this. That's, this is why this was not. Yes, like I said, I, I, I am a 21 Jump Street fan of the old series. I'm not too big of a fan of new movies. But I like cop movies. I'm a, I'm a big, um, I, I mentioned this a while back, and even with the political um, rhetoric that they throw in there every so often, The Rookie. I, I love that show. It, it's a cop movie. It shows what cops go through. And is it all right? Is it, you know, is it accurate? I don't know, but I, I'm just interested in that. That's I'm, I'm into, uh, first responder shows. I just, that's how I am. So maybe that's why I like 21 jump street, but to say I'm a big Johnny Depp fan. No. Am I a big Amanda Heard fan? No. And maybe that's why I wasn't, that's maybe one of the other reasons why I wasn't attracted to this case but ladies and gentlemen a lot of people don't look this trial took seven weeks and it was publicized every day the new uh, this is what happened in the Depp and her trial but you had michael schussman being shown that he was a liar in federal court and nobody knew it only lasted two weeks i, I said this the general flynn michael flynn this is still going on. They're still bringing up how he lied to the FBI and how he was helping Trump win the election. That's still going on. Now, look, look the Will Smith slap. I think a lot of people have forgotten about it, but it's still out there. Um, this, this whole trial, this is fresh. That's, that's breaking news. You know, a boom. I, I had a big 
big red thing come across my screen uh, when I was doing this stuff. Breaking news, Fox News alert. Now, I wasn't planning on talking about this, ladies and gentlemen. It, just, it happened minutes before I, I started recording this show. And I thought I would bring it up. All right. Let's get back to politics. Um, Biden is frustrated with AIDS for walking back his statements. Worries? He looks weak. A report from Fox News. I think this is this originated from MAC. President Joe Biden reportedly frustrated with his staff in the White House and their efforts to rush to explain something the president has said. The so-called cleanup campaign he has told advisors undermines him uh, he told he uh, he has told advisors undermines him and smoothen the authority uh, sm uh, smoothers the authority that fuels his r rise worse he feeds a if it, it feeds a republican talking point that he's not fully in co command nbc news report it last tuesday which was um the 31st so ladies and gentlemen the president Says bumbling things. I call him backwards Joe for a reason. And his aides try to come and fix it up. Now he's mad at them because they're trying to make him look good. Backwards Joe, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just... And look, to be honest, look, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not perfect on this program. If you have listened to any amount of time on this podcast, I have... Look, the other day I caught some, and I'm going to admit my failures to you guys. Um, the other day I mentioned the Georgia, um, uh, recount or with, um, Dr. Odds. It wasn't even Georgia. It was Pennsylvania. So I make mistakes. I understand that, but I'm not the president of the United States. My mistakes do not affect anybody. I hope not. Me misspeaking a state or me saying a wrong word or me, or me not right now, not, not doing proper grammar. This is the president of the United States, ladies and gentlemen. This president has just set, told us on Sunday, last Sunday, hey, I'm not sending rockets to Ukraine. Yesterday says, hey, I'm sending long-range rockets to Ukraine. This is the president of the United States that can't get away with, with racist tides or is losing black voters. So he's bringing in uh, Asian people to go ahead and say, hey, we have, a racist, uh, we have a racist problem with Asian people in this country. We need to fix that. There's no, there, there was no reason why to bring this up. But now he is mad that his aides or his his camp his cabinet is, ru is is rushing to go ahead and to fix his blunders also i heard that there's 21 staffers that are leaving the white house and you might be well, what that were well, they're black staffers if you remember when he got into office that oh i'm gonna be hard this asian i'm gonna hire this woman i'm gonna hire this this african-american i'm gonna now that's leaving and making him look oh, 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 white people. Oh, no, they're going to call me white supremacists. Apparently, that, that's what he's thinking. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this ain't the... I, I've heard that Biden is very... Um, he's worried about his image. And, uh, and if his image doesn't look good, he don't like that. He gets frustrated. He gets frustrated. He gets flustered. Um, but I just like how he says that this fuels a talking point. Uh, okay, Mr. Pre Mr. President, Mr. Backwards Joe, if you are running the country, why are you making outlandish statements that they got to fix? And look, that, to be honest with you, that's why a lot of the cabinet is there. If the president says something stupid, they try to fix it up and give him in a good light. The president was angry that he that his comments were being interpreted as unpredictable according to the NBC re report white house spokesperson and andrew bates pushed back on the NBC report the breathlessness of propaganda one and two versus the denial of being re relentless to group 28 tells you what you need to know about this story and as we've said before no clarification of the president's remarks are ever issued without a direct approval he said in a statement uh look and you know biden's upset that this, this is biden's upset about this and they they're still they're still trying to clarify they, they, he's mad at us so we're gonna go ahead and help him out and tell the people he's not really mad at us now ladies and gentlemen on the on the on the side note of this i think the president is in trouble i think the whole democratic party and the left is in trouble 
when they have to turn on the president of the United States, who they backed. NBC, look, NBC is not conservative friendly, ladies and gentlemen. They're not. But NBC is putting a hit piece on the president. Um, I think, I, I guess hell has frozen over. Because MSNBC, NBC, CBS, ABC, they, 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 they try to defend Biden tooth and nail. But that's that. That's how that's how it goes. This article came from CNN. Supreme Court temp temporarily blocks Texas social media moderating law. Now you might be asking well, what this is all about. Now this is from CNN. I also got one from uh, the Daily Wire.com. Supreme Court blocks Texas social media censorship law. See CNN swapped it out. They said moderation and. Daily Wire said censor. So apparently that a case uh, where they the, in Texas, they passed a law that they went ahead and said that, look, you can't censor Republicans. Well, Big Tech did, did fight on it and they went ahead and they they went look at it. The Supreme Court has temporarily blocked the Texas social media censorship law in a 5-4 decision. Now, this, this was a shocker to me, uh, but I, I want to look more into this, but I wanted to bring this out. Justice John Roberts, Brett Kavanaugh, Amy Coney Barrett. Now that's three, uh, three conservatives, Sonia Sotomayor and Stephen Breyer ruled in favor of the ruling on Tuesday. Shocker. The, th the, I think it was Brett, uh, Aldo Thomas and one of the, um, one of the, uh, non-conservative, uh, the liberal judges and, ah, uh, let me find their names. Yeah, Justice Samuel, Samuel Alito, Clarence Thompson, Neil Gorgeous, and Ella Condren, they went ahead and voted. Now, we had, now this is a bipartisan, you think about it. But the way that the ruling um, is that, now this isn't blocked, ladies and gentlemen. The, the, well, correct, the law is blocked right now, and they can come back in front of the Supreme Court. The way that it is looking is that they said it would take away, that this rule would take away the First Amendment right of the social media account or the, so, the social media platform, i.e. Facebook, Twitter, True Social, um, Parler, wh whatever you want to make. It was, it was stopped. Now, I know what Texas was doing, ladies and gentlemen. I have felt this pressure already as well, where I've been censored. I've been throwing a flag every once in a while. And that's why a lot of people, a lot of people ask me, why didn't you bring up this story? Why didn't you bring up that story? And I'm like, I, I, I I'm doing more studying on it because if you notice a lot of articles I bring out as Fox news, CNN town hall, a lot of, a lot of these people are legitimate newspapers. I, I, it'd be, it will be a cold day in hell. If I bring something from Alex Jones or something like that, I'm not against Alex Jones. Alex Jones has, he has a podcast. Um, he, he could talk the way he has a first amendment, right? To talk about whatever he wants. But I, I just do so I do stuff a little different here, but I have gotten flagged in the past. And this is what Texas was trying to do. Texas was trying to say, you need to not censor your people. So they made a law that they couldn't censor, but the Supreme court felt that this ruling now, all they did was just block the lower ruling and it, they just blocked it for right now. Now this is still going to go up to this. This, we will be talking about this later on. In the, where they're going to die when the Supreme court is really going to have to look at all the case. Cause according to this article from the daily wire, they didn't make the decision on merit of the law, but reimposed an injunction blocking it from taking effect while federal courts decides on whether it can be enforced. When I first heard this, I'm not going to lie to you. I thought, Hmm, all oh, the Supreme court's social media is going to go rampant now. But they're not big tech. You, it, just, it just blocks the law in Texas until courts can figure out. Now, like I said, this, I said this a while back, you're going to have cases that are going to go back to the Supreme court. There's no doubt about it. Or you can, you see a case and like, yeah, that's a Supreme court case. You see other ones like, no, that by far, that ain't going to the Supreme court. So th this case right here, I, I honestly think, uh, I'm not, I'm not big and I'm not big into, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not Mark Levin. I promise you. So, uh, I can't really tell you what 
what this is. And, you know, let me go ahead and pull up the CNN article because I did say I had the CNN article and I want to be transparent as possible. Uh, yeah, in an unusual alignment of five justices in the majority where Chief Roberts, and I just mentioned all the liberal, uh, the Supreme Court ordered, ordered it is a loss for, t uh, wait, yeah. Who would have denied the request? The Supreme Court order is a loss for Texas. The state argued that the law HB 20 would prohibit large social media farms from blocking, banning, or demoting posts or accounts does not, it does not violate the first amendment. Now that was that the Supreme Court said it does not violate the first amendment. Now this is the difference with this though, ladies and gentlemen, listen to the, uh, listen to the writing of this. This is a loss for Texas. But the Daily Wire says no, it was a, it was just blocked. It can come back up. The, the majority did not explain its thinking, and Kendrish did not lay out her own reasons for her vote to allow the law to remain in the place. But a leader writing for himself, Thomas and Gorsuch, was critical of the majority decision. He said the case raises questions of it, great importance concerning the groundbreaking Texas law that addresses the power of Dominion's uh, social media companies to shape political discussion on important issues of the day. He stressed that he has not formed a definite view or a novel legal question that arises from the law, but that he would not have stepped in to block the law at the point uh, in the proceedings. Uh, let me see if they go ahead. Now they break down the law a little bit better, which is surprising for uh, CNN. So apparently, no, they... Uh, yeah. So see, they don't bring, they don't bring it out. They don't bring it out that this is going to, and this is what CNN is doing that for a reason. Ladies and gentlemen, they're trying to go see the Supreme court. Don't think big tech is involving in, in censorship or not. Nope. And that's not true. So we're going to see what happens with this case. Cause as I said, it's, it's, it's in the lower courts. It's just, just blocked. It, it, they didn't, they didn't just, they didn't toss it out. This was not a Supreme court case that had great importance apparently, but um, we're going to see what happens because now, this, like I said, this does involve me too, because I post on social media a lot. I post my show, I post articles, I post my own opinions. We're gonna have to see what happens with this. So, but anyway, everyone, I want to thank you for listening to the Cajun conservative show. This episode is, um, I could say brought to you by me. <laughs> now nah, I want to just thank everybody for uh, coming and joining me on this episode today is an honor and a blessing as always to be part with you. Remember to keep yourself informed and don't listen to anything that the left. Well, nah, let me correct myself. Stay informed and make right decisions. Cause at the end of the day, that that's, that's when it's going to come down to you knowing the law or you knowing what's going on. There's a lot of people that don't know what's going on and guess what? They, Oh, the, the CNN said it. Okay. It's true. Be honest. But anyway, again, I know I'm rambling. It's time for me to go take a nap. So until next time, be blessed, be encouraged. Remember Jesus Christ is coming back and he's coming back soon. So don't be fade of heart because Jesus has overcome the world. Remember, if you want to know Jesus, your Lord and savior, send me a message and I will tell you how to make Jesus your eternal savior until next time. Be blessed, be encouraged. You have a good day. And he